Hi guys, today I'm going to share with you something really interesting and fascinating and especially if you're an angster because we keep seeking a lot of things in our life and uh, this is one of the most important things that we need to seek which will bring peace and tranquility to our lives. So if you're an angster, stay with me till the end of the video and if you're rest of others and your heart is still young, stay with me till the end. So what is a fascinating thing? It's called the Mandokya Upanishad. Upanishads, yeah. And what are Upanishads? They are called Vedanta. And what is Vedanta? Vedanta is something that comes at the end of the four Vedas, the Rig, Sama, Yajur and Atravana Vedas. So are you going to speak something religious? No. That's the fascinating part about uh, Mandukya Upanishad. Because Mandukya Upanishad is the shortest Upanishad and it has got only 12 verses. And it doesn't talk, talk about religion, it doesn't talk about God, belief, faith, it talks about you it also it talks about me it talks about our consciousness how about that so what is consciousness according to mandukya upanishad consciousness is something that is called awareness or the real self or it literally means you me that's what consciousness is according to mandukya upanishad and mandukya upanishad clearly states that our consciousness exists in three states okay and that is where we need to understand it the first state is called the waker and the waker's world. Here we need to understand one thing. We are not the body. Our body is a part of us. That means the body is a part of the consciousness. We are awakened in a body and then we use the senses to reach out to the world and experience the world. So the consciousness looks at from a different point of view rather than of our mind. So what happens? So I get up in the morning, I use my touch, smell, uh, seeing senses to sense the world and then I go through a lot of emotions day in day out. I go through pleasure, I go to happiness, I go through despair, I go to uh, jealousy, uh, etc, etc, etc and that's what we experience all the day. So after experiencing all these things and then we go into the second state because we get tired right and then we go to sleep and the second state is called the dreamer and the dreamer's world. What happens here is this, we leave the physical body and then we enter a dream world which is created by our mind in which we take up a different body and then we go to a lot of experiences. Again, we, we, we go and kiss our lover, we jump from 33,000 height and then uh, there is a snake chasing us, there is a ghost uh, chasing us. We go through all these things which is created by our mind and our, conscious, and our consciousness looking at it because after getting out of the sleep, you will be able to remember the dream. How you are able to remember the dream? Because your consciousness is always awake all through the dream and it experienced it. And then here comes the third state that is called the deep sleep state. And this deep sleep state is, has been accepted by doctors, neuroscientists and psychologists and it does exist. So what happens in the deep sleep state? Forget body, forget mind, that is just you and total blankness. We call it as blankness. Why is it blank? Because there's nothing for us to experience or for us to enjoy. There is just you. Im imagine our eyes, okay? When I open my eyelids and then I use my eyes, I look at the world, I look at colors, I look at objects, I look at animals, I look at people, okay? What happens if I close the eyes? Does my eyes stop working? No, even if I close my eyes, my eyes will be working. Same way, even if I enter the deep sleep state, my consciousness is still awake but it's not able to reflect or enjoy or experience anything because there's nothing in there. That is called the deep sleep state. How I can experience this deep sleep state? Have you ever said that, okay, I didn't know how long I was out. I slept like a log. I slept happily. Have you, have, have you said these phrases? Then how did you know that you slept happily? It means even in the deep sleep state, the consciousness was awake. And what happens after the deep sleep state and then we get back into the waker and the waker's world and then all problems come roaring in all the issues all the happiness and everything comes back to us and then it becomes a cycle so every day day in day out we go through these three states and all through these three states our consciousness is awake interesting right here's the fascinating part now let's imagine a person who has got a stage three cancer and who's undergoing chemotherapy and he has got only little money left, he has got a family to feed and his job income is insecure. Now, 
Imagine how is Baker and Baker's world experience will be. Look at how many problems he'll be facing. Now imagine the same guy entering the dream state. Will he experience the same amount of agony, despair or uh, uncertainty in his dream state? Maybe and maybe not. And what happens in the deep sleep state? Even a person with a stage 3 cancer can experience deep sleep and he can sleep like a log or he can experience something happy while he has all the problems in his Vekas world. This is where the beauty of the Mandokya Upanishad lies. It's where it's really fascinating. What the Mandokya Upanishad claims it claims is your consciousness, that is you, you are not at all affected by what's happening in those three states. You don't care, you, you doesn't care at all. Only your mind is affected. How? Because the consciousness looks at the three states of mind as a movie. As long as we are part of the audience, the movie is not going to affect us. But if we get into the movie, if we play the character of the movie, then it's hard to say. Let's say we are looking at an action movie where there is fight, there is death, and there are scenes where a person's bones are getting cracked. What if you are playing that character? Would you say, I'm enjoying it? No. That's where our consciousness is really brilliant because it treats the states of mind as objects, not as subjects. My dear friends, if we are able to grasp this kind of knowledge, then we will be able to live here and now with peace and tra tranquility. We can enjoy everything in life at present. Let it be happiness or let it be despair. And we are fascinating beings. And there's a beautiful thing inside us. It's called the consciousness. We need to look more into it so that it unravels the secrets of a happy life and we can live it ever happily. Take care. Bye-bye.